What's up, guys? We are back from the FF Expo. Thank you to Bob Long for putting that on. Thank you to you guys who came out to hang out with us. It was a blast, but now it's time to get back to work, right? This is a concept today that I want to talk about that is a huge issue for fantasy gamers, and it has to do with the draft strategies you're using. And the biggest problem here is that people don't realize these strategies continue into the season. They don't just end with the draft, right? We always preach to be fluid in your draft, right? Know all the strategies, know all the targets for zero RB, hero RB, yin and yang, tight end, late round quarterback, wait on wide receiver, whatever you want to call it. Whatever the strategy is that you want to do, bully tight end, it doesn't matter. Make sure you know what the targets are and what the plan is so you can continue the strategy after the draft. I've seen so many times guys go zero RB and then they don't continue to look for RBs on waivers. They just stick with the guys they, they they filled their bench with and they never get that RB they need to get over the top. That's the type of strategy where the whole point is to load up on other positions, hoping that you can use the fragility of the position to fill in your RB1 or RB2 slot off the waivers with guys that become studs and then you have studs across the board, right? That's the idea with that strategy. If you don't continue that after the draft, you're leaving yourself out to dry. It's, it's a terrible use of that strategy. Obviously, if you just go balanced throughout the entire draft, then you just add whoever the best running back or, or wide receiver is off waivers. But let's say you draft a running back in the first round, and then you get a ton of value at wide receiver, tight end, quarterback. You don't draft another guy uh, at running back until later. You can't get all of those targets on your bench. You should have a huge list. In most leagues, you're not going to be able to just fill your bench with eight guys, right? So let's say you draft a bunch of guys and you don't have a spot for someone like Isaiah Pacheco, a guy who everyone's raving about at camp. Uh, you know, Andy Reid loves him. He seems explosive. Ideally, you would have a spot for him, but you might not. You might be in a shallow league where, you know, there's much better and safer guys being picked. You need to keep your eye on the wire if you went hero or zero RB. And if that guy blows up week one, like an Alvin Kamara or a David Johnson did, you need to be ready to drop all your fab and do whatever you can to get that player because it's part of the strategy. It's a huge part of it, right? Same with yin-yang tight end. I always preach this where if you wait on tight end, you take one safe guy, you put one upside guy on your bench, right? Let's say your upside guy is Austin Hooper and week one, he plays like 50% of the snaps and gets one target. You don't just sit there and hold on to Hooper. You got to move on to the next guy. Look for the next breakout player. A guy like Evan Ingram is a guy that isn't being drafted in most leagues because most guys take one tight end. He's like tight end 20 or you know 18. I'm not sure where he's going ever at this particular moment, but it's deep. So if he comes out week one and he plays, you know, 90% of snaps and has seven targets, you got to be ready to swap Hooper out and get Engram right off the bat or vice versa. If you went with Engram and Hooper's on waivers, we don't know what's going to happen with these guys. The uncertainty is part of the appeal. That's why you have to be ready to make those moves when the time comes. With quarterback, it's the same thing. And quarterback is even crazier because most people will just draft one. You can have guys, you know, with Stafford and Rodgers going as QB 11 and 12, you might be laying a 12 team league and only 12 quarterbacks get drafted. Well, a couple years ago, that kind of thing was happening. And Patrick Mahomes is going at QB 15. And it was a race to the wire to get a guy that scored 50 touchdowns and won you the league, right? So if you're waiting and you're taking the last quarterback, you have to have your eyes on these guys that have crazy upside. Like a guy like Tua Tagovailoa, who... People say he might not be that talented, and that's why he goes so late. But if you think about it, he's got all the weapons in Tyreek Hill, A.J. Brown, Mike Gusecki, Cedric Wilson, you name it, Raheem Mostert, Chase Edmonds. He's got all the weapons there. They just went out and got the best tackle in free agency with um, Teron Armstead from the Saints. Like, they're loaded up right now. They're ready to rock and roll. If Tua can be decent, he could be a huge asset, and you need to be ready to pull the trigger on that guy right away if you waited on quarterback. It goes for every position. And the good thing for you is we're going to be continuing to update our rankings, continuing to give our recommendations the whole way. I know I'm going to be updating the dynamic rankings. I'll always tweet out who my tight end ads are going to be. If you're going zero RB, then, you know, you've already read all Kevin Tompkins articles. You know a lot of his targets. Reach out to Kevin Tompkins. Keep an eye on Kevin Tompkins. He's going to be doing a lot of zero and hero RB builds himself. So he's going to continue to say who he's picking up, how he's continuing the strategy. John and Pemba's always a guy for quarterbacks. He's a killer at that. If you're waiting on quarterbacks, hit him up. See what he likes out there, right? I mean, if you're following Impemba, you're probably drafting Jalen Hurts. But keep an eye on what Impemba's doing at that position. And then for wide receiver, we all do it. Britt Flynn crushes wide receiver. Howard Bender always going to have his wide receiver recommendations. I'm going to have mine. 
everyone's going to have theirs. So you got to keep an eye out on all these positions. And when you lean into the strategy, you've committed to it. Don't stop. Keep on rocking. That's how you win these leagues. And those strategies can give you a ton of leverage if you hit on the waiver guys because you used all your early capital on the other positions, right? That's the game. All right, guys, good luck this year. We'll be with you every step of the way.